Hey everybody, in this video, we're just going to really quickly cover how to generate new components in a Stencil JS application. So if you come from an Ionic background, you're probably pretty used to using the generate commands to create new pages and services and things like that. Uh, with Stencil JS, uh, originally we didn't have a, a tool like that that we could use to generate new components. We would just have to sort of come in here manually, create a new folder, create a couple new files and probably copy and paste some things around, which, you know, isn't too much of a hassle, but uh, it is a little bit annoying to have to do. Now, I'm not exactly sure when this got added, but uh, I did notice uh, sometime recently that in the package.json file now, we have this generate script that has been added. And what this allows you to do is just automatically generate components and the files that you need for them. So we're just going to quickly run through an example and just show how to create a new component and add it to your stencil application. So the context for this one is uh, we're in an Ionic PWA uh, toolkit uh, application. So we've got some sort of component pages that we're using here. Uh, if you were using Stencil to create just generic standalone components, uh, you might have a bit of a different structure. Things might be named a bit differently, but uh, the concept is going to be the same. And so what we want to do basically is just open up the terminal and we are going to run the generate command. So to do that, you can actually just uh, run npm run generate because it's a script in your package.json file. Uh, you can also run the stencil generate command if you uh, have stencil installed globally on your computer. Uh, but if you try to run that and you don't have it installed globally, you'll get this error saying stencil command not found. Uh, so you can either install that globally or you can just prefix that with the mpx command here and instead run mpx stencil generate. And then we just supply the name of the component that we want to generate. So in this example, we might do something like app detail. And remember that web components do need to have this sort of hyphenated name and this start bit here, which we're using app for. Generally, that's going to be some kind of unique uh, identifying kind of uh, name that you're using. Uh, the Ionic components are a good example of that because they are all prefixed with ion hyphen and then the name of the component. Uh, but using just app is fine. Uh, so we'll say mpx stencil will generate app detail, hit enter. And then we get this little prompt here, which is going to ask us which files we actually want to generate. Uh, in this case, you're probably going to want to generate the style sheet. So you can keep that on. I shouldn't have pressed enter there, by the way. I'm going to do that again just to show you. Because I wanted to show actually toggling some of those off. So I deleted that. Let me just run that again. Uh, so we can actually toggle them on and off with uh, the arrow keys. So if I uh, hit left, it's going to turn that style sheet off. If I hit right, it's going to turn it on. Or you can just hit spacebar as well to toggle it on and off. Uh, so right now it's saying it's going to generate the style sheet file, which is the CSS file, uh, spec test, the unit testing file, and the end-to-end -end testing file as well. Uh, so if you're not using automated tests in your application, you might just want to switch those off. You don't have to, you can just leave them there. It doesn't really uh, you know, cause any harm, uh, but you can do that if you want. You can turn those off and now it's just going to generate the style sheet and the main TSX file. So if I now hit enter, it's going to create that app detail component. And you can see here we have the CSS file, which are automatically generated and the TSX file. And so by default, this is uh, set up in a way that's probably more similar to what you would use in a project where you're creating standalone components. Uh, so for a typical uh, Ionic sort of application, if that's what you're doing, you might not be. Uh, you probably don't want the host element there. So we can get rid of that and the slot and whatnot here. Uh, you can get rid of shadow as well, which will turn off shadow DOM to you if you want to have that there or not. And then in here, you can just set up your normal sort of Ionic page, uh, which if we jump into app home, you can see it looks generally like this. You have your header content, stuff like that. And so this might be useful just to copy and paste into there, or you can just, you know, remember how it's all set up. Uh, but that is the basic idea. We now have our page set up, our app detail page, uh, without sort of having to manually create those files. And so one more thing I will cover before we finish this video is that you can also generate those files uh, or new components inside of a specific folder. 
uh, similar to the way you can do it with the normal Ionic CLI, again, if you're familiar with that. So what we can do is run npx stencil generate, and then uh, if we had a subfolder, uh, uh, something like a dashboard, for example, maybe we wanted to you know, put a bunch of components related to a dashboard in there, we can just say npx stencil generate dashboard forward slash, uh, and then whatever our component is, let's call it, um, and it's a app project overview component. So I'll hit enter again, it's gonna ask me what I wanna generate this time. I'm just gonna generate all the files this time, hit enter. And now if we come over to our components folder and you'll notice all of this does get generated inside of this components folder. Uh, we now have a dashboard folder and then inside of that we have our app project overview uh, component. And this time as well, you can also see we have those end-to-end -end test and uh, unit testing files. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, I just wanted to show you this command because it's something I've been wanting for a little while in Stencil and now we have it and it's really nice to use. So uh, hopefully this helps. Uh, if you like this video, do feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.